All right, so let's talk blades, because, you know, that's what we're into. Well, what we have for you, what we have for you, what I have for you today is kind of a a big and I want to say kind of a really, really huge, overly sized karambit. I don't know if that's what they want to call it, but it looks like one. And uh, it doesn't really feel like one, in my opinion. If I saw a picture of it, which I did before I purchased it, I would have thought it was a karambit. But it really isn't. It's not a karambit at all. At least when you hold it in your hand. When I held it in my hand, it didn't. It wasn't a karambit. It was just another gargantuan cold steel, which to me, I love cold steel. So I can't really complain too much about it. I can't say it's a bad thing. But I do have one for size comparison just so you guys can see what I'm talking about. But this one is a cold steel tiger claw. It says it right there, tiger claw, and it's got the three, you know, slashes right there indicating that this is supposed to be a mean, mean knife. And it is cold steel CTS XHP. Yes, this is carpenter steel. It has a, uh, it's a metal ring on here. I want to say it's aluminum. And you got the triad lock on there. Really substantial pocket clip that's nice and durable. I carry this for a couple of days, but it's really wide right here. So when you put this in your pocket, it's going to take up a pretty decent chunk of your pocket, or at least half of your pocket space anyways. And um, so yeah, I mean, it feels like a cram bit kind of, but it's just huge. In my opinion, carrying this knife, you would probably want to carry it in this fashion because you would want to use it as a claw more over than a karambit. And uh, in my opinion, because it's just my opinion, I think it's more effective to be used as clawing rather than karambit. And as you can tell, holding this thing, as I do, you're going to have all that extra reach and space. You could use this as a karambit if you really wanted to. I mean, you could still use it as a karambit. But it just doesn't feel right. If you were to get this in your hand, it's huge. And you got all that extra space. And I'm just holding it normal like I would normally hold a karambit. And it's still, you still got... A ton of space. Is that bad? No. Um, I just feel it better when you hold it like a normal knife without the ring. You got the jimping right here. Everything just fits normally just as such. And you can use it as a self-defense hook like you would with their Black Talon series. Just Tiger Claw. You know? So, uh, yeah. <laughs> wasn't cheap on Amazon I believe this was probably like 120 when I bought it and this was a couple of I want to say more than a couple of years back um, if you can still find it it might be a different price now but when I bought it it was it was over 100 I want to say like 120 130 bucks just just guessing because I when I bought it, it was it was one of those type of like, oh yeah, I know it's going to be cheap, and it's not. So there's no liners in there. It's just G10 and then your other hardware that you can see on the outside, blade, back lock, and the um, ring, finger ring. And um, let me just... Just so you guys know how wide this thing is in the pocket. Let's get the calipers out. Fifty-one point three. Um, pretty wide in the pocket if you really wanted to carry it any other way. Of course, you would probably have this on a dedicated pocket. I knew a buddy who had one of these and he would put the uh pocket clip on this side and put this in his back pocket. I think it's his right butt cheek <laughs> and he would be able to get to it and it would draw it out but uh, he said that this one's kind of difficult to draw out of the pocket because you have this hump right here 
this belly on the spine. So when you try to catch it on one of your pocket on your pocket, it's gonna not do it all the time. So you kind of have to angle it at a certain way. You have to practice with this uh, catching this out of the pocket because it is designed for this to be waved out of the pocket because it's got that that signature that thumb disc right there where you can do that and it's made for that but you got to do it a certain way otherwise it will not execute I found that it took me about 80% of the time to actually successfully draw this out of my pocket catch this portion right here to wave it out my pocket like any other waveable knife that Cold Steel has made but this one is probably the most difficult I found it, and that's the reason why I have this pocket clip on this side, so that way when I have it in my right hand pocket, I can get to it, I can put my pinky through the hole and pull it out, and it will, about 85% of the time, catch this thing and pop it open in wave fashion. But because of its design being having that hump right there, it makes it really difficult for the pocket to catch on that. So you kind of, when you do it, you kind of have to pull it in a certain way and angle it as you pull it so that way it does catch but even then it's it's pretty difficult so uh let me just show you here's the tiger claw all right and uh here is another karambit that i have in my collection this is the um smith and wesson smith and wesson extreme ops karambit now this is old i've had this for many years and it was a part of my collection way before my collection even blew up to the way it is so i think i got this at big five years and years back or it was a gift from a friend i can't remember but i know that big five had this particular model for some time and then they obviously stopped selling it but this is a regular size karambit you can tell the difference small big so this is just normal this is obviously not but you can tell that it's just huge it's huge and of course cold steel is known for that and i like cold steel they make some very interesting stuff am i going to do a review on this knife no um I'm going to tell you right now, it's <laughs> surgical steel. Um, I wasn't too impressed with this knife. I carried it for a little bit, and uh, I just didn't like the fact that this was loose. And no matter how many times I've tightened it, this thing, this pocket clip always was loose. And there's only one way to carry this, and that is just the way that it's set up right now. So pulling it out the pocket wasn't too difficult. Deploying it was because getting to that little oval to pop this open. And then instinctively, once you do that, you're going to want to hold it like this. So my finger rests right on the uh, Ricasso right here, and that's way too close to the blade. And to be honest with you, this blade is sharp around about here. But here and here, and I'm pressing down it's dull so then right around here it's dull just here right in the middle right here there's edge and even that's not even that sharp so I can tell you you know I mean yeah this could be great for self defense it does fit good in the hand but it's all just one, made of one piece of steel. I mean, different por portions, but I mean one kind of steel, excuse me, for the handle and the blade. And it's, you know, frame lock, which is always nice. But this one I'm not really going to... I practically did a review on this in short term for now. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, it's, it's a cram, but you could get... I mean, this thing was like 25 30 bucks when I remember it back to its original price wasn't that much came in like a stupid box that said you know smith and weapons extreme ops trust your life to the extreme or some you know cruddy thing like that but this you know this one is kind of like the bigger deal 
So let's go ahead and get to the specs on it. So the blade itself has about a three and a quarter inch cutting. Three and a half overall if you're counting the reach. If you're counting the full reach from where you should be holding it properly, I'm saying about like four inch reach altogether with this. So I guess that's kind of nice. Assuming that you're not going to choke up on it and you're going to keep it right there, you're going to have that four inch reach. Overall, because it's kind of a crescent shape, you're looking at nine inches with a six and a quarter inch handle that's including the ring and uh, obviously there are no liners I don't know if I've already stated that there are no liners and why not do the weight comparison on this one so Da -da -da, about five ounces even so five ounces for this knife so yeah I mean it's respectably light and why not let's just put the uh, extreme ops from Smith & Wesson 4.79 so this being all metal is actually lighter than this guy right here kind of ironic right so yeah I mean, and you know what? Why not? I'll, I'll do this for you guys. Just so you guys have a good idea how wide it is. Alright, so the Extreme Ops is 10.9 on the handle. 2.7 on the blade. And on the Cold Steel Tiger Claw. You're looking at 10.3 on the handle. Oof. And a 3.2 on the blade. So uh, I kind of got a little bit of a story on this. When I first got it, I was practicing with it. I was trying to draw it out the pocket. And I actually sliced my finger. And I didn't know that I sliced it because it was stinging. And I didn't slice it in a way... I didn't cut my finger in a way where it was from the blade. It was actually from the tip right here as I was pulling it out the pocket it went like this and it was so fast and so quick that it just the back right here slid across my fingers as it drew out of the pocket and it was just the back right here just the back tip of this knife from here up and it was enough to cut open my pinky when I first got this a few years back. And how I knew, because I was like, where did I get this paper cut from? And I was thinking it was a paper cut. And it wasn't a paper cut. It was actually from this. So be really careful if you decide to buy this. Um, when you draw this out the pocket, practice and be extremely careful. It's very difficult to wave this out of the pocket because of this arch being so aggressive to catch this which is all the way to the back end and then on top of that the different ways you can carry it just be really careful because this thing is cold steel and we all know that cold steel is retardedly sharp so let me just show you what I mean by that so I'm gonna use this dull piece of wonder to cut through some paper so you understand what I mean I've not tried to touch this up but we'll see how sharp it is. So that's pretty dull. Alright, there's, there's that one part that I was telling you about in the middle of the hook. Where it has a little bit of an edge. This is... Like I said, it's dull. It's pretty dull. It has a workable edge on there, but it's not effective by any means. And... Here's the tickle call. I'll go ahead and use this. And look at that. That is... And you can hear it. It's... This thing is ridiculously sharp. It's going through it like nothing. 
Look at that. I can literally do this all day. Just how sharp it is. It is ridiculously sharp. So, in my general opinion, when I practiced with this knife, just drawing it out the pocket, it was extremely dangerous, and I knew that. And I still managed to cut myself just with the back tip right up here, drawing it out, and it's just kissing my skin as it did. It gave me a cut. Did I bleed? Yes, I did a little bit, but that's when I thought it was just a paper cut. No, it was from this bad boy right here, so be really careful with this thing. It's ridiculously sharp. And it's cold steel. Anytime you get a cold steel knife, even on their boxes, stay that, you know, warning, extremely sharp, yada, 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 that sort of bit. So if you're interested in it, try to find it. Um, I think Amazon might still have it. I don't know, but this is a knife that's probably four or five years old because uh, when I got it, I carried it for a little bit, and then I decided not to because it was just so gargantuan, but I, I still like it. I still like my Karambit collection, so... I will see you guys in the next one.